uh, you know, in the beginning there was RNA and some clay or who knows, you know, and these protocellular origins of life. And they say that, no, in the, in the beginning there was a sort of the duality between material and sign. Being anything alive, being any type of organism as a process as well as a... Uh, as, as something that's constant and it sort of reminds me of the particle wave discussion in uh, in physics <laughs> being simultaneously two things individuality manifests itself in different ways in nature we're so connected on a on a biological level what is the relationship between the maternal organism or the maternal mammal and the fetus that resides within it this is one organism with one uh, uh, you know one waste disposal system, one source of breathing and food, um, one immune system that tolerates the fetus, an organism in its own right, part of the maternal organism. The main reason why I'm, I'm transgressing these borders, as you say, is to bring attention to the borders themselves, to the way that we actually classify, to the way we differentiate, and to the way we other. I, I'm not sure how separate I thought we were in the beginning. <laughs> I mean, really, if you think about it, I mean, we, we never were separate. In When we began, we, we were already at least two. Intertwinement and an interdependence. A holobiont is going to be an individual composed of multiple evolutionary lineages, the genes are working together to make a single, um, a single thing which is collectively struggling for existence. And it turns out that we have something very much like collective reproduction happening uh, with these mycorrhizal collectives. So recall a mycorrhizal collective is a mycelium connected together with a plant. I existed pretty much all through my mother's life. I'm particularly fascinated also by the other side, by the maternal cells in all of us. Because your mother is carrying these cells from all of her prior uh, pregnancies, and the mother cells can sometimes, well, will usually um, get into the, the fetus who's in the womb. And if one of those cells from your older sibling is there, boom, got cells from your older sibling. Yeah, so it's actually a natural state of us to constantly have foreign cells inside of us or as a part of us. And so they can actually become not just blood cells floating around, but part of your architecture. They were part of the architecture of the heart. Every cell in your body is composed of this cooperative uh, collective composed of multiple evolutionary lineages. Now we're seeing that this cooperation happens all over the place. It's really just deeply shown how biologically interconnected and intercreated we are. We need to remember this existence is in both space and time, and it changes. So we have form is changing over time, and yet our intuition is that biological individuality continues despite this metamorphosis. Every stage of a biological individual causes the next stage of the biological individual. So, so we are waves propagating through matter. The, the matter is the air we take in, the food we take in, and all of that matter is there, and we are propagating through it just as a wave propagates down a beach. That makes biological individuals process it. Birth, birth is a fairly, you know, birth is quite a, a momentous and a, a monumentous thing, right? I mean, it's about a disconnect, right? A sudden thing of change as you can get. We can't simply cut off, when we grow old, we would cut off our hand and, you know, stick it into some regenerative medium and grow a, a younger version of ourselves and, you know, throw away the old one. We can't do that, but plants can. And we are not the, the dominators of nature. We're, we're not here to rule nature. We are just one more part. It's way more complex than the, um, the story centered around humans. So not only will they connect um, uh, a parent and offspring plants, we'll have mama trees and baby trees connected, and the mama tree is feeding the baby tree through this, uh, this connecting mycelium. They connect whole forests. They, they, they connect different species. And the next step is that living organisms are free to create meaning out of a certain physical uh, molecule or a physical structure, right? I find it um, really fascinating to think about transgenerational effects. And I mean, why wouldn't you want 
to get as much information over a longer period of time. And so here's a way in which the maternal grandmother may even be transmitting information. So it's it's as if this um, conversation between molecules is as much a part of life as this whole autopoetic uh, context. Or actually, autopoiesis wouldn't be possible without these molecules and this material also carrying meaning. Our bodies kind of still are able to tap into um, the communication channels that are still open. And like you said, every time we eat a plant, right? It's not just nutrition, it's also information showing that, that this clear divide doesn't necessarily exist or that the clear divide is just a story, but that there can also be other stories.